What is up guys? Welcome to CJ Hero Ball. I know the name changed, but uh, after I posted my first video, I realized that somebody else had that channel name, so I changed it. So, today we're about halfway through what's usually called Champ Week, which is when all the conference tournaments get played. And some of the tournaments for the seven teams that I talked about in my last video have concluded. Uh, some of them have not, but for the ones that have not, the regular season has concluded. So my thoughts on the team standings going into their conference tournament as far as if I believe they deserve to be in may or may not have changed. And I'll go through that with each of the seven teams. So uh, before I get into the video, I just want to tell you guys, if you like this video, please share it with people, uh, like it and subscribe and please comment. Uh, I am always welcome to feedback in terms of how I can make the channel better. Like I said last time, I'm pretty new at this. And I'm also always open to opening a dialogue. If you disagree with some of the points I make, I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, a lot of the projected brackets certainly do. Uh, so anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. Thank you. Number seven, Grand Canyon University. So, when I published my last video, or at least when I made it, because I made this the day before I published it, Grand Canyon had not yet played their second game against Seattle University. They had three games left, and if you'll recall, I said they've got to win all three in order to get into the conference tournament and be able to not win it, and in my opinion, be deserving of getting into the tournament. Well... The good news for them, they went and beat Seattle U. And then the bad news was on March 5th, last Friday, they lost to Utah Valley, and then they beat Utah Valley last Saturday. So now Grand Canyon is off my list of seven mid-major teams that I think deserve to get in regardless of what happens in their conference tournament. So at this point, they're winning their in and losing or not. And I've looked around at a lot of projected brackets in terms of what will actually happen, and there's no way they're getting an at-large bid. Um, even if they were to win their conference tournament, I've seen some of the brackets projecting that they would end up having to play in a first four matchup. So they'd probably be a 15 or 16 seed anyway, uh, at least from what I'm seeing from you know actual bracket experts. Uh, you're welcome to look those brackets up yourself, or I'll find a couple to put in the description. So, yeah, they are in a win-or-go-home situation now. Number six, Liberty University. So, with Liberty, um, they won their conference tournament, so they are in. Now, a lot of brackets have them seated pretty low, around 14 maybe. That's what I've seen with most of them. Uh, I think they should be higher than that. I think they should be more like a 13 or a 12. Um, they're 23 and five, and this will take a minute to load here. Sorry about that. But they're 23 and five. Uh, they went and they won their three conference tournament games uh, against North Alabama. That wasn't really, you know, a convincing win against everybody else, decently convincing. Um, but regardless, they're in, so. I'm happy to hear that. I'd always rather have all these seven teams win their conference tournaments and then for sure get in and then you get the best tournament possible. Uh, but yeah, so they win and they are in. Number five, Drake. So with Drake, um, I've seen a lot about them being on the bubble, last four in, first four out. I think that's ridiculous. Look at their record. They're 25 and four. Um, and they lost in the championship of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament by 10 to a team that's ranked in the top 25 and has been for the last several weeks. Um, so I really think, I mean, I said last week, you know, when I sent out the last video that they were pretty much clinched. And, you know, they did lose to Bradley. By six, they beat them by one. 
day before that. Um, but, you know, they went and beat Missouri State, which is – that was a close game, but Missouri State's no team to scoff at. They're actually – I saw that game, and, you know, their record speaks for itself. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's decent enough. And then they lost to a ranked team by 10. I'd much rather have a 25-win squad in versus a team that, you know, barely broke 500 um, in a power conference. So I think for sure they should be in, whether or not they'll get in. Well, in the past, the committee has messed up a lot of those. But at the same time, a couple of years ago, Belmont got in as a last four in after losing the Ohio Valley to Murray State. Um, so we'll see. But I hope that they get in because I think that they deserve it. Number four, Western Kentucky. So, with Western Kentucky, last time I said, unless they win these next four games, the two against FIU and the two against Old Dominion, then they need to win their conference tournament to get in. Now, I am going to revise that statement, and I'll explain why in a minute. So, obviously, you see here they lost to Old Dominion. Otherwise, they beat FIU twice pretty handily. They beat Old Dominion one out of two times. Their margin of victory is plus one if you add these two together. They do have one more home loss now, um, and I don't really think that that should hurt them too much. Uh, The loss itself might hurt them, but the fact that it was at home, I don't think will hurt them any more in particular. Okay, so how can Western Kentucky get in without winning their conference tournament? So before I get going on this, I want to tell you uh my webcam is a bit weird right now it occasionally is good occasionally it's strange so if the video is funky that's why and i apologize so let's get into it so first of all they have to win the quarterfinals and the semifinals they have to get to the championship and if they were to lose in the championship then they'd have a chance past that it really depends on who they play so as you can see from the bracket here they either play university of texas san antonio or they play Charlotte. Now, let's go down to the standings here. I don't think who they play in the quarterfinals matters uh, all that much in terms of their ability to get an at-large bid, but there is a team that I think they should be hoping to see, and that is uh, University of Texas San Antonio as opposed to Charlotte. The reason for that is because the University of Texas San Antonio right now is 14 and 10. They win, they're 15 and 10. If Charlotte wins, they're 10 and 15. You'd rather play a team that's got a winning record than a losing record when there's that big of a difference. Now, assuming they win in the quarterfinals, then it comes down to who they play in the semifinals. I think, in terms of their ability to get in without winning the conference tournament, they would need to beat UAB here. Now, Marshall, the only argument that you can make for them is that if they were to beat Marshall in the semifinals, that's one of the teams they lost to in conference play. UAB is not one of those teams. And so you could make the argument that you'd rather have them beat a team that they've already lost to. Rice, if Rice is here, they have to win their conference tournament, in my opinion. The reason I say UAB is preferable is because UAB right now is 21-6. and six. If they were to get there, they'd be 22 and 6. Rice right now is 14 and 12. If they were to get there, then they would be 15 and 12. I don't think that that's good enough. I I really don't. Now, the other question is well, what if Marshall got there? If Marshall gets there, they're 16 and 6. And at that point, then you're looking at a team that's got a pretty decent record that you'd have beating on your resume. But obviously, uh, the top team for them to get to play and win in that game and then not have to necessarily win in the championship to be deserving of a spot would be the University of Alabama Birmingham. Then the championship for a team for them to lose to, it would have to be Louisiana Tech. And the reason I say that is because they've got a way better record than pretty much everybody else that they would play on the road to the championship. Old Dominion does have a decent record at 15-7, and seven, uh, which at that point, if they were to get there, would be 
17 and 7. If Louisiana Tech gets there, it's 22 and 6. So if you beat a team with 21 wins, beat it and then lose to a team with 22 wins, and it's a close game, and you've beaten Alabama, you've barely lost to West Virginia, then I think you've really got a good shot and you should be given an at large bid. And then, of course, if they were to have these scenarios play out in their favor and win all three of those games, then I think it would really help their season uh, because of their seeding. It would push them up a seed or two. Number three, Winthrop. So Winthrop, thankfully, won their conference tournament. So that means they are for sure getting in. They're 23-1. and one. And, you know, I've looked at a few brackets. It seems like people have them slotted as a 13 or a 12. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I really think that's ridiculous. Um, they're 23-1. and one, And the one game that they did lose, they lost by two. Uh, so, and I understand why they're slotted there because that's, where people would usually put these teams, like why bracket experts think they'll go there. I just think that it would be ridiculous for the committee to put them that low. Uh, again, they're 23 and one. What more can a team do? I know that they didn't play a bunch of great teams, but they took what you gave them and they did what they could control with it. So, um, you know, I th- those are my thoughts. I think that they should be, at worst, a 10 seed, uh, and maybe even higher. That's what they deserve. Um, but anyway, luckily they're in, so they don't have to worry about being on the bubble or anything like that. Number two, Belmont. So if you remember in the last video, I said that Belmont deserved to be in. Uh, I mentioned, you know, their record now, they're 26 and four. Uh, but I will go down here and I'll show you. Um, we talked about the Moorhead State loss, and it didn't show up when the last video was submitted, but it's shown up now. Obviously, that was an overtime loss, uh, which I think is very important to consider. They took a 20-plus win team to overtime. Now, they did lose to them in their conference tournament final. Um, again, I just think that Moorhead State won over 20 games, Uh I saw something like they'd won 20 of their last 21 to finish out the conference tournament. So I don't really think that you can hold that against Belmont. And again, um, who would you rather have in the NCAA tournament? A mediocre power conference team or a team from a mid-major school who won 26 out of 30 games? Um, So I really think that uh, they deserve to be in. I think that Most fans want to see them in unless you're a fan of one of the teams that they knock out of the field. Um, So I I definitely think they should be in, you know, the Moorhead State loss. It's not like they lost to a lowly Ohio Valley team in, you know, one of the first conference games. They lost to the second best team in the conference, or you could argue the best team in the conference. So anyway, those are my thoughts, and I hope that they get in because I think they could really make some noise. And finally, number one, Loyola Chicago. So Loyola Chicago, uh, they won their conference tournament. They beat Drake in the conference tournament championship. Um, I don't think it was really a question of whether they'd get in, although you never know. Um, But I think that Loyola Chicago – not only should they get in, their seating should be pretty high. I've seen a lot of people putting them at like a between an 11 and a 9 seed in projected brackets. Um, I really think that they deserve at the lowest the 7 seed. I mean, they're, they're ranked, right? So if you're going to take the ranked teams, then 7 times 4 is 28, and there's only 25 that are ranked. And Will is you know, in those 25, and they'd been hanging around at 21 for a while. So to me, after you beat Drake, at the very least, you deserve a seven. I would say more like a six or a five. I don't think they deserve to go any higher than that. 
their ranking wouldn't warrant it. But I think anywhere between seven and five would be fair. I think anywhere lower than that um, is, in my opinion, just a little bit ridiculous given their record of 24 and four, the fact that they've been ranked for weeks now, uh, the fact that they beat Drake in the final. So, yeah, I'll be interested to see where they land, but this is a team to watch out for. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for watching the video. Um, I really appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm pretty new at this, so I'll take any feedback I can get. So uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see any of where I got my information to make this video, I'll put all those links in the description. All right, thank you. Bye.